Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of The Ranting Redhead. I am the host, Aiden. And today I wanted to do something a little different, something that a friend of mine uh, brought up, uh, an idea that he came up with for me, and I figured I'd, I figured what the heck, I'd try it. And this is me going, I am going to discuss every movie coming out in January of 2023, whether it's in theaters or on a certain streaming service, I will discuss it and give you my opinions on whether you should watch it or not, because I think I have valid, uh, movie expertise, film criticism. So I'm, I'll read you the plot of every movie I, d- I go forward, I discuss, I will give you the whole synopsis. All right. This one's coming out today on video on demand and digital. It's called Grasshoppers. On the dawn of their anniversary, Nim spontaneously ditches work to spend time spend the afternoon day drinking with Irina, but what was supposed to be a fun-filled day of love, lust, and celebration of life slowly devolves into a harrowing evening of consequences, all while under the heavy scrutiny of a biased neighborhood watch. Wow, that sounds very boring, and I cannot, I, I am not surprised that it's coming out in January. That, that sounds like a horrible romantic comedy trying to be a horror that might have an action sequence so i would say no i do not think that is worth watching all right um coming out wednesday january 4th is a documentary uh with a limited release called the subtle art of not giving a and i don't know if it's shit or fuck because it's bleeped out it's supposed to be bleeped out that's the title Um, based on the global best-selling self-help phenomenon, the subtle, I'm going to call it this, the subtle art of not giving a fuck is a cinematic documentary designed to help us become less awful people. The author himself, Mark Mason, cuts through the crap to offer his not giving a fuck philosophy, a dose of raw, refreshing honesty that shows us how to live more content, grounded life and grounded lives with over 15 million copies sold the subtle art of not giving a fuck struck a chord with readers all over the world and now is no bullshit life-changing advice comes to the screen backed by both academic research and and scatological jokes the subtle art of not giving a fuck shows us that improving our lives hinges not on our ability to turn lemons into lemonade but on how learning to stomach lemons all right I think that sounds interesting. I'm not a doc. I am not a documentary type of guy, but I think I would watch it if I had the time. I would absolutely check it out. Um, I am always interested in hearing people's uh, f- life philosophy, and this guy, okay, this guy kind of sounds like, yeah, you know, he kind of sounds like me, curmudgeoned, but he's like, you know, just let, just, just don't let things bother you, and he does it through jokes. I'm betting. So I'm, I would say definitely give that a watch if you can. I think I might have to watch it. Um, coming out January 5th is 5,000 Blankets on Video On Demand. Inspired by a remarkable true story when her husband has a mental breakdown and goes missing, a determined young woman and her young son set out to find him on the streets, sparking a movement of, comp- of, a, of compassion towards those in need and inspiring a city. Wow. Don't care. I'm tired of seeing these. Ba- just be okay. Just because something's based on a true story doesn't mean it has to be brought to the screen. There's so many things that happen in real life that we don't need to see a movie of. Hell, my life sounds more interesting than this. All right. Uh, coming out Friday, January 6th is Megan. And this is a movie I'm actually, I'm going to go see. It's, it will be in theaters. It's, it's PG 13. It's called Megan. Megan. Um, a brilliant toy company, Robotness, uses artificial intelligence to develop Megan, a life like a lifelike doll programmed to emotionally bond with her newly orphaned niece. But when the doll's programming works too well, she becomes overprotect- overprotective of her new friend with terrifying results. I saw the trailer to this movie and I thought it looked pretty cool. Um, uh, James Wan is in it, and if and anybody who doesn't know, James Wan did like the Conjuring movies, Annabelle, those type of movies. I think he also did. I never saw it, but he did that Aquaman movie. I didn't watch it because Aquaman is a loser. Um. All right. Next, also coming out Friday, in theaters, uh, with a limited release is A Man Called Otto. 
with Tom Hanks. It's PG-13. It's a grumpy, isolated widower, widower makes an unlikely and reluctant friendship with his new neighbors. Isn't that the plot to Grumpy Old Men? I've seen that movie before. Yeah, it says remake. I don't know. Is that a remake of Grumpy Old Men? I could... I, I'm probably wrong. But I don't, it doesn't sound interesting. I like Tom Hanks, but I don't think I want to go see that. Um, okay, here's one called Landlocked. Uh, video on demand with a limited release in theaters. At his soon-to-be-demolished childhood home, uh, Mason finds a VHS camera that can see into the past, invoking a deadly obsession with nostalgia. Hmm. That sounds interesting, because as someone who finds nostalgia very gross, I find it interesting that they could be, like, making fun of, like, no, that's dangerous, you should move on with your life. I think that's actually kind of interesting. I would I would give that a watch. It's thriller, suspense, and sci-fi is what it's, it's, um, that is the genre is that it's coming under. I, I think I would watch that. Why not? Uh, Candyland. Candyland follows Remy, a seemingly naive and devout young woman who finds herself cast out of her religious cult. With no place to turn, she immerses herself into the underground underground world of truck stop sex workers, aka lot lizards, courtesy of her host Sadie Riley Brolin or sorry, Sadie Riley Liv and Levi, under the watchful eye of their matriarch Nora an enigmatic lo- local lawman, Sheriff Rex. Remy navigates between her strained belief system and the Lot Lizard Code to find her true calling in life. It will be... It's a thriller horror on video on demand. I... I... Hmm. That's a tough one because I feel like that could be... A, that's obviously a pretty messed up movie. But I'm kind of... I'm kind of interested. I... I'm... I... F- feel like it's one of those movies that is probably okay if i were to guess i don't think it's anything great or bad but i'm i'm intrigued i think this i think this could be an interesting watch i would recommend it um the old way rated r with a limited release in theaters a former gunslinger played by nicholas cage believed he had left behind left his past behind Sorry, let me let me rephrase that again. A former gunslinger believed he had left behind his past, but when a gang of outlaws murder his wife, he must once again take up arms and violence. Look, I love Nicolas Cage, and Nick Cage in a Western sounds interesting. I love Westerns. I love Nick Cage. I don't know if I need to see this one. Um, it just seems like a recycled plot that I have little to no interest in. It's one of those I cannot believe actually has a limited release in theaters. Um, the pale blue eyes, the pale blue eye, sorry, a veteran detective and a detail oriented young cadet team up to solve a series of murders that took place in 1830 at the U S military Academy at West point. The young cadet leader later becomes world famous author, Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, it will be on Netflix. It's a drama. It's a drama thriller horror adaptation. That could be interesting. Um, yeah, I, I would say give that a watch. That 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 sounds. I don't know who's in it, but it could it could be good. It's on Netflix. I don't know. It doesn't say how long it is, but I'm I'm in I'm intrigued. Maybe I'll have to give that a watch. Um, all right, here's one with a limited release in theaters. I think it's called Imani. Oh, I'm sorry. And the Pale Blue Eyes has uh Christian Bale in it. And Scott Cooper. I'm not familiar with him. But it has it has Christian Bale. So you, you know you're going to get a good performance. Alright, back to Amani. A year after what she thinks was a car accident, a seemingly normal wife and mother slowly recovers from amnesia, only to learn that she, is actually, she actually is a highly sought-after Army Special Ops Lieutenant who holds a secret that would blow the lid on a widespread government conspiracy. No thanks. Sounds boring. I don't care. It has a limited release in theaters. It's just... I don't know. I I feel like I've seen that movie before, just to where it's like, I don't... You ever seen Total Recall? I don't know. I haven't seen Total Recall in many years. But, like, isn't that his thing where he slowly gets back memories? Am I thinking of the right movie? I don't know. But it, it just feels like a recycled plot that I've seen before. 
Okay. With a limited release in theaters, this movie is called Last Resort, rated R. A former Special Forces soldier becomes a one-man army when his wife and daughter are taken hostage during a bank robbery. As he brutally neutralizes a, the gang of thieves, the, the lives of millions hang in the balance when a highly lethal toxin is stolen from the vault. Eh. No. I, I wouldn't say... I wouldn't... I wouldn't waste your time with that. It just... Uh, maybe it could be okay. It's under action thriller, and I'm a sucker for a good action movie, but I don't I don't foresee this being a good movie. Um, I, I'm moving on to January 10th. Um, ooh, what's this? This is, a docu- uh, this is a documentary on Netflix that's coming out called The Hatchet-Wielding Hitchhiker. The true story of Caleb Kai McGilvery, McGilvery an, un, an unhoused nomad who, after saving a woman from a violent attack, became an overnight celebrity sought after by reality TV producers and adoring fans alike, until murder turned his fame into notoriety. I, I feel like that'd be a better movie than a documentary. I feel like it'd be a better, like, cinematic experience than just seeing a documentary. I just don't find documentaries that interesting. It's very rare. Uh, January 11th on Netflix. Uh, it's not rated. It's called Noise. Uh, Julia is a mother, or rather one of many mothers, sisters, daughters, colleagues, who have had their lives torn by a widespread violence in a country gagging... In a country get, yeah, a country gagging a war against its women. Julia is searching for Gur, her daughter, and his, her name is Gur. <laughs> uh, and in her search, she will she will weave through the stories and struggles of the different women she will meet. Gur is her daughter's name. Uh, was she just angry when the daughter came out? Gur, and that's what she is like. Oh. I came up with the perfect name. <laughs> I would say absolutely don't watch. Um, and not for any reason that you're thinking. Literally, the only reason I'm telling you not to watch is because her daughter's name is Gur. <laughs> I don't think... I don't think you need to see it. Um, oh, and sorry, I'm just scrolling down now and it's saying this. So, the reason A Man Called Otto from earlier was a limited release. That was like an early limited release. It's coming out January 13th, I should say. Um, but it doesn't tell you that. I, why does it say limited release? Just tell me when it's coming out. I don't care if it's coming out a week early in certain theaters. Um, okay. What's this one? Shin Ultraman for one day only in theaters. There's never a dull day on Japan's newly established SSSP Kaiju Defense Task Force led by Kimo Tamura, played by... Hidoshi Nishima, I'm terrible with names. After a particularly challenging encounter, a silver giant giant descends from the sky to rescue the planet. Dubbed Ultraman, this giant dubbed Ultraman, this giant's identity and purpose are a mystery. That that could be okay. I hmm. That's a tough one. I, I I would say, if the movie sounds interesting to you, watch that one. But to me, I don't think I would give it the time of day. Um, okay, back to January 13th. Um, in theaters, it's called The Devil Conspiracy, rated R. Um, a powerful biotech company launches a breakthrough technology, allowing them to clone history's most influential people with just a few fragments of DNA. You know what? Call me crazy. I think that sounds interesting. It's an adventure, thriller, suspense, horror, and I, I could see why. I, I would check that out. If you are looking for what I believe could be a schlocky, dumb, fun type movie that could be interest. I think it could be interesting. I would, I would give it a watch. Okay, here's a movie I saw the trailer for when I went to go see Violent Night, and I was laughing hysterically at the trailer. So I'm already going to say watch this movie. It's rated R, and it has the 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 weakest title I've ever heard, but that's what makes it funny. It's called Plane. 
After a heroic job of successfully landing his storm-damaged aircraft in a war zone, commercial pilot Ray Torrance finds himself caught between the agendas of multiple militia who are multiple militia who are planning to take the plane and its passengers hostage with Gerard Butler in the main role. And of course, you know, if it has Gerard Butler, you know what kind of movie you're getting. But the fact that it's called Plane just made me laugh hysterically. I think that's the worst title I've heard in a long time, but it, oh, it made me laugh. Um, uh, another one I saw the trailer for. Um, all right. It's called House Party. Rated R. Two best friends decide to throw a raging house party at one of their houses when their friend's parents go away. I literally could not care less for this movie. It's it's a comedy, also a remake apparently. I I, I don't care. It it doesn't. It I saw the trailer for it. It just looks boring, repetitive. A movie that I've seen before. And same thing as before. It's saying that the old way is coming out. On video on demand, January 13th. I don't know why it's telling me all this before. I just tell me, like, when it... I don't want to see the limited releases. So, pardon me, if I say that it's limited, it's probably coming out later. But it won't tell me until after I scroll all the way down. So, this one is called The Tomorrow Job. Uh, follows it, The Tomorrow Job follows a team of thieves who use a time travel drug to trade places with their future selves to execute the ultimate heist. When interrupted on a job, the team must fix their past mistakes to, re- to prevent dis- disastrous consequences. I, nah, skip it. Sounds boring. Um, it sounds like one of those movies where it's like, Whoa, dude, we're gonna be so much fun. This is gonna be awesome, man. I don't know why that the producer talks like that, but I'm assuming that's what they all sound like. But I, I, it doesn't it does not sound interesting at all. I would say skip it. Um, here's a movie coming out on Netflix called Dog Gone, not rated. So, a father and son repair their fractured relationship during a forced hike of the Appalachian Trail to find their beloved lost dog. And that, that could be okay, but I also don't think it would be good. I feel like it's one of those movies that it will be very forgettable, but it will probably be, probably be very big on Netflix for a few weeks because it has a dog in it. I feel, I don't know, I, I don't think I would watch it. Um, here's another one, limited release in theaters, also coming on video on demand. It's called Dormouse, not rated. In this gritty thriller, Mouse is an irrelevant dancer at a dead-end burlesque club run by Mama, a tough, shady club owner. When Mouse's only friends and fellow club dancers go missing under mysterious circumstances, nobody at the club seems too concerned about these so-called easy girls, and the police couldn't care less. Mouse and her constant sidekick, Ugly, quickly realize that it is up to them to dig up all the dirt and start the hunt for culprits. Uh, desperate for answers, and with time running out, Mouse chooses a very risky play that plunges her further down the rabbit hole into a sordid underworld, leaving her out in the open. When she discovers it, what what she discovers is that corruption runs deep, monsters are real, and that sometimes justice is meant to be taken into your own hands. This sounds awful. I love the fact that it's like, oh yeah. Many people went missing, but the police couldn't care less. Yeah, Nobody's searching for them. So yeah, we gotta do it ourselves. It's like the worst vigilante story ever. That sounds horrible. But it sounds so funny. It's just, yeah, nobody cared that people went missing. It's not like one person. It said a couple people. So, oh my god, that sounds awful. But I would say watch it. It sounds really bad fun. Okay. Uh, Jethica. And I say that because it's G-E-T-I-H-I-C-A. I'm not just doing my lisp. It's called Jethica. But then her name is said Jessica. Is this like Beetlejuice where it's like Beetlegeist when you spell it out? All right. Jessica lives in <clears throat> Jessica lives in fear of a man named Kevin who follows her everywhere she goes. While on a road trip, she reconnects with Elena, an old friend she hasn't seen since high school. Elena has been hiding out has been hiding out at her deceased grandmother's ranch in New Mexico. 
When Kevin mysteriously appears again, Jessica and Elena seek help from beyond the grave to get rid of him for good. But Kevin is different from other stalkers and won't move on so easily. Um, okay, so hold on. It, it says that they seek help from beyond the grave. From beyond the grave, they have to seek help. So it's a supernatural movie. I love that the last line is, but Kevin is different from other stalkers and won't move on so easily. Isn't that a lot of stalkers is that they don't move on? There's a reason they're stalking you. It's because they won't move on. He's like, he is just like every other stalker. I, I think that sounds terrible. Jethika. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, that sounds terrible. Uh, okay. What's this one? Skinamarink with a limited release it's a horror movie in Skinamarink two children wake up in the middle of the night to find their father is missing and all the windows and doors in their home have vanished <laughs> the, I, I'm not even reading the rest the doors and the windows just vanish oh yeah you, you can tell it's going to be a good movie it just vanished sure 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 alright the third guest is a thriller with a limited release uh Evie Kenneth is talented, driven, and consumed with work until the unthinkable happens. Her daughter dies all of a sudden. <laughs> After burying her daughter, Evie turns Evie turns to a former lover, Hart, for comfort. He decided he decides to take Evie with him on a ghost hunting assignment that turns into a nightmare. When real paranormal events occur, the two must fight for their lives to survive from these unseen forces. Terrible. Terrible idea for a movie. That, yeah, Evie's daughter suddenly dies and she goes with heart on a ghost hunt, on a ghost hunting assignment. No, but I'll probably watch it. It sounds terrible. A lot of these are so bad that I kind of want to watch them. Um, there's a lot of movies on here. So, which one do I want? What, sorry, the website's being stupid. Give me a second. All right. Here's one coming out on Hulu called The Drop. Lex and Manny are a happily married young couple running running their dream artisanal uh, uh, their dream bakery in Los Angeles and excited about starting a family together. A trip to a tropical island resort for a friend's destination wedding coinciding with Lex's ovulation cycle. <laughs> Feels like the perfect opportunity to conceive, but good vi <laughs> but good vibes and high hopes are cut short. When shortly after their arrival to paradise, Lex accidentally drops her friend's baby in front of all the others. <laughs> paradise Paradise becomes purgatory for our couple as <laughs> Reclamations, passive aggression, and old wounds begin to permeate the island reunion and throw Manny and Lex's future into deep uncertainty. Uncertainty. Oh my god. <laughs> that movie. Oh my god. On Hulu. It's, well, it is a comedy, I will say. So maybe it's like really bad up because that that is funny. I think that's a very funny mo funny movie. Watch it. It's going to be on Hulu. Uh okay. I'm sorry, they dropped the baby. <laughs> uh okay, here's one with a limited release and coming out on video on demand called The Offering. In the wake of a young Jewish girl's disappearance, the son of a Hasidic funeral director returns home with his pregnant wife in hopes of reconciling with his father. Little do they know that directly beneath them in the family morgue, an ancient evil with sinister plans for the unborn child lurks inside a mysterious corpse. How many of these type horror movies am I going to get? They're so bad. I'm, t I'm, t I'm tired of seeing them. They all sound awful. Alright. On Sacred Ground. Based on the true events during the 2016 construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline that runs through the Standing Rock Reservation, the film, the film follows Daniel, a journalist and military veteran, and Elliot, an oil 
company executive who finds themselves on opposite sides of the fight during the construction of the pipeline. As the story unfolds, the two characters go down separate paths during one of the most heated protests and confrontations with Native American tribes in modern U.S. history. I do not care. Alright, I'm looking for a good one. Because these all sound terrible. Okay, I don't know if this is going to be good, but I like the title. It's called, um, it's called, There's Something Wrong With The Children. Not rated. When Margaret and Ben take a weekend trip and longtime friends Ellie and Thomas and their two young children, Ben begins to suspect something supernatural is occurring when the kids behave strangely after disappearing into the woods overnight. I mean, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't really... I don't care. It just sounds boring. I don't know. I I wouldn't watch it. I'm trying to see if there's any good movies coming out. They all sound terrible. I want to give you some good movies. Um... Uh, let's see. I'm looking... I'm going to just read off some of the titles that I'm seeing until I see some good ones. Um, Out of Exile, Bermuda Island, The Sun... Alone at Night. I need a good title. When You Finish Saving the World. What's this one? Uh, when You Finish Saving the World. We'll have a limited release in theaters. Set over three decades, Nathan is a father learning to connect with his newborn son. Rachel, a young college student, seeks to find her place in a relationship and in life. And Ziggy is a teenager hoping to find out where he came from and where he's headed. I do not care. It has Emma Stone, and I like her, but I couldn't care less. Uh, there's nothing good. There's no good movies coming out. What's this one? Shotgun Wedding, coming out on Amazon Prime. A couple's extravagant destination wedding is hijacked by criminals in the process of saving their families. They rediscover why they fell in love in the first place. With Ryan Reynolds. And of course you know people are going to watch it because it's got Ryan Reynolds. I could not care less for Ryan Reynolds. I think it's I think he's fine. But that sounds awful. None of these movies look good. I'm looking through anything that I could find. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. So really the only movie that I'm looking forward to that I saw. Out of all of this whole month. I'm looking forward to The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I'm looking forward to that. What was that? I'm looking forward to Plane because it sounds terrible. And um, I'm looking forward to The Drop, that awful Hulu movie. But the one that I'm really looking forward to, I'm going to go see on Friday, which is Megan. I think that I think those are the only four that I'm looking forward to. But other than that, man, January of 2023 sounds awful for movies. I'm so I'm disappointed. Just go Go watch Violent Night. Go watch. I don't care if it's after Christmas. It's a it's a great movie. Go watch that instead. It's a lot more fun. Um, but yeah, I think I'll end it there. But yeah, I, I'll do. Hey, you know what? If you guys like me talking about movies, I'll gladly do them in February, and hopefully we can get a better freaking lineup. But with that, I'll end the episode. Thank you all so much for listening, and I look forward to talking to you all later. Have a good day. Bye bye.